Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Photoshop Quick Tips Podcast. My name is Justin Seeley, and I'll be your host. And as you can see, there's something very big happening on 4-12-2010. That's right, Adobe is officially announcing Adobe Photoshop CS5 and the rest of the Creative Suite CS5 as well. And on Monday, after the big announcement, I will be launching my official Adobe Photoshop CS5 Training and Resource Center. This is going to be a hub where you can go learn all about CS5. I'm going to have video tutorials. I'm going to have links to other places to go learn CS5, links to specific Twitter people to follow. There's all kinds of stuff I got jam-packed for this. All you have to do is go to www.seely.tv slash CS5. Seely.tv slash CS5 for my official Adobe Photoshop CS5 training and resource center. It's completely free. And you're going to learn a ton. So check that out Monday right after the big announcement. Now let's get to this week's tutorial. I'm going to jump into Photoshop here. And basically what I'm going to show you this week is how to take this photograph that you see right here. And turn it into this photograph right here. So some pretty dramatic changes between those two photos awesome effect though. If you've been following me on Facebook and Twitter this week, you've seen some images that I've created using this technique. It's very, very easy to do and very fun to do as well. So I'm going to go ahead and close that up. won't save the changes to that one. And I'm going to jump into Bridge. And inside of Bridge, I have that photograph that you just saw. And I'm going to load it in Camera Raw with Command or Control R. When I get this photo open in Camera Raw, there's a couple of things I need to do. I need to take recovery to 100, fill light to 100, contrast to 100. I'm also going to take clarity and vibrance to 100. Now, if you've watched some techniques recently on the Dave Hill look, this looks pretty familiar so far. And that's really what I started with. I started with everybody's, you know, universal technique for achieving his look, and I kind of expanded on it. So now, saturation. This is where it gets kind of to be your own thing. For every photograph you use, it's going to be different. So this setting really is just up to you. For this particular photograph, I'm going to use negative 80. Basically, what you want here is for the shadow detail to kind of go away. You want the image to look a little bit more flat. And then you can dial in that shadow detail by using the blacks slider. For this particular image here, 75 in the blacks does the trick. Gives me nice depth a little bit more shadow detail, nice looking effect. Now, I'm going to switch and go to the split tone tab. Now, split toning generally is used to introduce color into the highlights and shadows of a grayscale image to create a split toned effect. In this case, we're not going to use grayscale. We're going to keep it color and we're going to use split toning to almost create a cross processed like effect. So, I want green in my shadows and yellow in my highlights. So let's start off with the highlights here. For the hue, I'm going to go ahead and push that to 60. For the saturation, I'm going to change that to 75. For the hue and the shadows, I want that to be 125. And I want my saturation to be at 60 to introduce more green into the shadows. Now the balance is another place where you get to have a little bit of fun. You get to change whatever you want here. For this particular photograph, I'm going to gear it more towards the shadow end. I want it to be a little bit more green, so I'm going to take that back to about negative 70. The last thing we're going to do in Camera Raw, let's go to Lens Correction and take the vignette to negative 100. That adds a darkening effect all the way around the image. Then we're going to hold down the Shift key and normally where you would see open image, you should now see open object. When I do that, it should launch Photoshop and it jumps me right in with a smart object of the photograph that I was working on. Now we're ready to run a filter. So we're going to go to filter, blur, radio blur. In the radio blur dialog box, I'm going to set my amount to 100 
my blur method to zoom, and my quality to best. Now this is where you get to be really creative. In your photograph, determine where is the best place for this blur to emit from. In my particular photo, I want there to be rays of light streaming out from behind this hill that's in the foreground. So you can see over here in this radio blur dialog box, I can pull and push this radio blur anywhere I want. I want to gear it more towards the lower right hand corner because that's where I want it to come from. And so I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. This is going to take a while because this is a big photograph. But once it finally renders, you'll be able to see exactly where your blur is coming from and if you got it right. Now in this particular case, I've been practicing with this image a little bit so I kind of know where to put it. It may take you a couple of steps to figure that out. Now, I did go a little low. If you want a little low or you need to reposition it, just come to the layers panel, double click on the name of the filter. Then I'll just take this and kind of move it up a little bit. Maybe even a little bit more than that. Something like that. Hit OK. It's going to have to re-render, so you got to be patient with this technique a little bit. It takes a while if you're working on big photographs, especially raw photographs. But once it finishes, it should show you the repositioned blur. There we go. And that's exactly where I want it. I want it coming up right over the top of that hill right there. Now, we're going to change the blend mode of this filter. Not of the layer, but of the filter. So come over here to the Layers panel. Double click these little slider icons. That's going to take a minute because it's going to have to go through the radio blur process again. Once it opens up, you're going to get the blending options for the radio blur filter. And what we're looking to do here is just kind of overlay these rays of light. We're going to do that by using one of the lightning blend modes. Okay, The lightning blend modes are light and screen, color dodge, linear dodge, and lighter color. I've been having some great luck with lighter color. I would also recommend using lighten and screen. I would not recommend color or linear dodge. I'm going to try lighter color. And that's exactly what I'm going for right there. The rays of light kind of shooting out. The source is right there behind that hill. And I'll hit OK. Now, I'm going to go ahead and select the smart filter mask for that particular filter. I'm also going to grab my brush tool. Set my foreground color to black. I'm going to choose a large soft edge brush. In this case, it's 400 pixels. I'm going to set my opacity on my brush to 50%. And basically what I'm going to do is come out and I'm going to brush out the areas in the photograph that I don't want that light effect to be overlaid on. And that's basically this entire hill in the foreground. So I'm just going to kind of brush that out. Lowering the opacity of the brush makes it easier to kind of blend it in with the background so that it doesn't look like you've just kind of hard edge removed that light from all this stuff. So I'm just going to brush that out. And so you can see the light almost looks like it's just coming out from behind that hill. Very cool, awesome little effect here. Just a few short and easy steps. And that's it. For each different photograph, it's going to be different. What you brush in, what you brush out, that's totally up to you. If you want to check out my Facebook and Twitter accounts, you can see some of the images I've posted, some of the ways that I've used this technique. Very cool little technique that really can be accomplished in just a couple of minutes. So if you have any questions or comments about this technique, you can send them to me via Facebook at facebook.com slash celiefb, twitter.com slash justinseely, or you can email me, justin at celie.tv. I do take tutorial requests as well. People have emailed me. I've been putting their episodes here on the show. I'm recording new ones all the time, so just let me know what you want to see here, and I'll do my best to get it done for you. Thanks, everybody, for watching this episode. Don't forget to check out my CS5 Training and Resource Center launching Monday. My name is Justin Seeley, and I'll see you next week.